good. <laughs> so you've been on tour the last couple of days. How's that been going? Oh my God. I mean, come on. I'm with the band. It's so good. I love it. Living the wife life. I am living the wife life. Yeah. You are so good at living the wife life too. Like all, you're so good at like posting and all of the- I love Giving that. the people what they want. I'm giving the people what they want. I'm giving myself what I want. I get to dress for every show. I get to wear, ooh, this is one thing I do really badly. Okay. What? These, uh, they call them laminates, I call them badges. You're supposed to bring them. Once you get one for a tour, bring it again, I always forget it. I always have to get a new one. I must have like 50 of these. I, I always go to the tour manager. I'm really sorry, but I, I forgot my badge. I'm really sorry. I'm yeah. with the band, I promise. Uh, yeah, yeah. So but. I've been to a Duran show with you, and it's really funny walking with you in the crowd. Like, you're a celebrity at Duran shows. People stop you. Everyone's like, <laughs> fluffy, fluffy. Like, people want pictures with you. Yeah. It was kind of wild. I had never, I mean, I've been out with you, but I've never seen you in that kind of environment. It was really funny. It's fun. I have a good time. I, I have such a good time. I love... I like standing right on the side of the stage where John is. Then I can, you know, it, it doesn't sound the best. It sounds the best when you're standing in the sound booth, but, um, or the sound desk, do they call it? I know nothing about music, just FYI, nothing. But I have a good time. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. So I think really what the people want to know, what the Durannies want to know, yeah? is how did you meet John? What's the love story? Mm. So I actually met John at a party in LA and it was my daughter Zoe's, I think it was her sixth birthday. And she had this joint birthday party at a friend's house. What was like really terrifying about this party is that this woman, unbeknownst to myself, put some kind of dye in the pool. So if a six-year-old peed in the pool, it turned blue. And it was like so stressful. It was so stressful. I didn't know that that was a real thing. I've seen that in movies. I feel like there's like some like Adam Sandler movie or something I mean, where that happens. I didn't think that was a real thing. Now, that's kind of psycho, right? Like, yeah. Who would want to like terrify? Like that would be like also, horrible. The pool would be blue immediately. Let's be real. It's a six-year-old's birthday party. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was blue. But it was really, you know, you, it was stressful. It was stressful for the mothers. It was stressful for me. It was totally stressful. So I'd promised a friend of mine who wanted to meet someone that I would take her to this party, but I was so stressed out by the end of it. I was like, oh my God, I, there's, and then I remembered I had to take her. So I went and that's where I met John. And it was kind of weird. I mean, I, I was like on a lounge outside trying to chill out, you know, and it's like, oh, is there anybody cute here? I was like, oh, I think he's, you know, he's kind of cute. Well, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I didn't meet him until I was leaving. And so I guess we had a mutual friend there that, that he, I guess he thought I was also sort of cute. So at the very end, he came up to meet me through this friend and towered over me. Weird. I was wearing flats. They were, wow. they were Gucci flats, actually, but Tom Ford Gucci flats. But it was strange for me to be in flats because John is a lot taller than I am. So that was a bit, you know, unusual. He did kiss my hand, which was, I wasn't sure about that, but it, you know, it's very romantic and yeah. chivalrous and a little, you know, I'm not sure, but it was great. And then she called me the next day and said, you know, how do you feel about going out with you know, John Taylor of Duran Did you know, Duran. when you saw him at the party, did you recognize him or you just thought like, oh, he's cute? No, I didn't know who he was. Because like I said, I literally know nothing about music. So when what, she called you and was like, do you want to go out with John yeah. Taylor? Did you know who who that was? Or like vague? She said John Taylor of Duran Duran. I knew who Duran Duran was. Got it. Um, so I did know that, but I didn't know when I saw him. Um, and so then she said, well, I'm going to have a dinner party. But the fluke was that my kids went to their grandparents first and last time ever. So it was like, uh-uh, party at my house. So I had a party, he came, and it was sort of like the Red Sea parted. Everybody kind of faded away and left, and we just ended up talking the whole night. And it was just, you know, it was kismet. It was love at first sight. We were together ever since. That's so cute. Yeah, and we've been together for about 28 years. Wow. Married 25, coming up in March. 
Wow. Going to get matching tattoos if we can figure out what they will say. I was just going to say what? Because you, ha- you have matching tattoos, right? Well, no, we don't have matching tattoos, but we will be having But you matching. have your ta- your tattoo is like dedicated to him, I'm assuming, right? It says Mrs. Taylor. Mrs. Taylor. <laughs> In case I forget who the fuck I am. So that's what that's <laughs> about. who the yeah. fuck is Fluffy yeah. Raxel anyway? Yeah. <laughs> I know. You should have seen me go to get this tattoo. I don't know what I thought that I was having like major brain surgery or something. Like I had to take like a, a pain pill. I was sitting there going, oh my God, it's going to wear off. Hurry up, hurry up. I mean- I didn't even feel like Was that your first tattoo? Yeah. Your only tattoo? I have another one. I have one there. Oh, right. Yeah. And that's all. Was that the same, same right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tiny also. Very cute. This though. one will also be tiny. Mm. Well, they'll have to keep us tuned to yeah. what it is. Yeah. It's like, where do you put it? Where do where you put it? Where does it go? Yeah. Yeah. That's a thing. Maybe you know? like, I feel like a lot of people have cool like hand tattoos <sighs> nowadays. Is that? Because mm. like, where, like, would, you don't want to put on your, like, no, right? Where, where are you no. going to put it? I don't want it there. Your, your ankle? I can't put it on my hands because as you grow older, mm-hmm. your hands start looking a little scary. Right. So I say no to that. Uh, I don't know. So you know, where's it like also, safe? It could go, you know, yeah, on the inside you have space. there. I, I kind of like these. But That's cute. Is that tacky for no, a grandmother? I, no, I, well... No. It could be. You're I a rock star wife. You can pull it. I have a yeah. friend that has like a little tattoo right like here and tiny, it's actually cute. tiny, yeah. Or it could be on my back. I don't know. Yeah. Someplace discreet. Mm. Options. Yeah, I'm, options. I'm interested to know. Yeah. Okay, so when you met John, I'm curious as to like what the juicy of it all was at that time. Let's see. Well, you know, it's funny. It's beca- At the time that I met John, juicy was exploding. It was just tidal wave, amazing, tsunami. And Duran was kind of, you know, in a lull sort of period, he used to say to me, oh my God, like if I have to sit through another interview and the, the, all the woman wants to talk about is juicy, 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 because juicy was so huge then. But John was the ideal man for me because he was into fashion. And I think on our first or second date, first date, we went to see the Sex Pistols. We went to see his friend Steve Jones and the Sex Pistols that at the palace. That was great. And then he came the next day with like a stack of Italian Vogues and French Vogues. And we just sort of poured through them. And he used to come to the office and he'd be like, he'd pull like a little teeny tiny t-shirt. And then he'd say, I want you to make this for me and like add another like 10 inches to it. And so we started making him things. And it was great. That's so, he yeah. still does that. He still comes to the office and like is like pulling clothes, yeah. trying things on. Yeah, he's a fashion guy. That's which so I love. fun. Yeah. I, if he was only into classic cars, that would be a problem for me. He'd have to definitely. be into, yeah. Although Got I have did, common interests. We do. Cars are not one of them, but we definitely, fashion is definitely one of them and traveling. And when I met John, I became obsessed with England and I became a crazy Anglomania and I, maniac, and I loved everything about England. So when I would go into London and there was no juicy there, that just was not okay. So- what happened is I went into Harvey Nichols, which was sort of the AbFab store, and sent them, Pam and I sent them a box and basically with a note. I mean, who were we? Sending Harvey Nichols a box with a note, you know, and it was just like, okay, if you can sell this, we're in business. If not, you can keep it. It's a gift. And of course, that was the beginning of an exclusive relationship with Harvey Nichols that was amazing off the charts. And business in England was insane. And that's where I saw the Daily Mail, which was, you know, just such a good publication. You know, don't judge me for that. Not in every way, but I like pop culture and sometimes I like a little gossip. So uh, you saw that they, he was, she was married to Guy Ritchie and- Madonna, they, you mean. Yes, Madonna, yeah. sorry. And they called her Madge over there. And I was like, Pam, Pam, they call her Madge. So we were embroidering everybody's tracksuits and we embroidered a tracksuit for her that had Madge on it, sent it to her. Of course, she went crazy, wore it, got shot in the Daily Mail, the Daily Mail. And- Rest is history. And Madonna and Juicy. Oh, my God. It just, it, it, it ignited another just like explosion in the Juicy world. That was amazing. Wild. Yeah. Also, too, you told me once that John was the inspiration for Dirty English, the yes. men's line of yeah. Juicy. That's why we called it Dirty English. Um, we call it, it, first it was called, you know, I think Barney's called us in the beginning and they wanted a men's line. And then John, because he was always at the office. In fact, all of Duran were there. They all loved the stuff and they wanted they wanted men's line. And it was like, how can you call a men's line like juicy men's? It was right. just like, you know, a little bit, you know, no. Mm-mm. So we dirty English because of John. Yeah. So cute. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. And it, the, the guy that did all the graphics for it was English. John did some of the graphics for it. We just had an amazing time. It was great. It was really great. Yeah. I love that. I yeah. feel like the best relationships are when you guys are supporting each other and you're like creative 
career endeavors. I feel yes. like you see that a lot. Some I don't know, some guys can't handle women with careers and like big personalities and big lives. I feel like it's like really great that you guys have that together. That is a really good question and that, that comment really. And that's really, really true because during that time before I met John, I barely dated. And it definitely is, it is intimidating to a lot of men to meet someone that A, is either making more money than they are, is more successful, is more famous, is any, any of the above. The male ego has a hard time. You have to, and, but John and I, we were, John had fame and notoriety and success already of his own at like 17, 18. So we didn't have that kind of he we wasn't trying to compete with no, Juicy. <laughs> no, no, he was so supportive. It was amazing. And I was supportive of Duran when they, they kind of, John sort of walked away from the band for a minute. And uh, we were in, once again, Barney's <laughs> and ran into Simon. And he was like, oh my God, John's my brother. I miss him, you know. And we did a show uh, at, at um, Joe's Pub to launch our denim line, Juicy Jeans. And Simon and John got together for the first time and played. And I mean, Women's wear daily editors throwing their bras oh on the stage. It was so good. It was so funny. It was it was hysterical. We had such a great time. But oh, it was great. I what love, a love story. And I love Duran. They're like my fam. They are all of them are just such amazing. You are sweet. with them a lot. You are with the band, quite literally. Yes. On tour, traveling. It's a it's a lot to travel with people, I think. It is. I do it now more than I did before. Like when I was really in, in the height of Juicy and so busy, I didn't do it a lot. But when I did it, it was so amazing because all the pressure was off me. I was just like, hey. Along for the ride. I have a shot of tequila and like I'm going here. And it's like I, all I had to do is get dressed, which I love doing. So that was easy. Now it's a little different. And Yazzie and I were talking about this. We talk about it a lot because she does it even more than I do. But it's really not easy to be, being on the road is not as glamorous as it looks. It's hard work. The hours are crazy, especially if you get up at 6.30 in the morning. Um, and it's tough. Food is tough. I'm always arguing about that. <laughs> They're like a pizza after the show. I, I mean, I think I said to John the other night, if you order a pizza after the show again, I'm not coming with you to the next <laughs> show. So we had grilled chicken last night. Yeah. Something healthy. I can see a, a salad, please. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, or you're just going to. No, that didn't work. Mm -mm. Also, like living out of a suitcase, like the, just the travel of it all, I I imagine would be really tough. I mean, one time the tour manager called me up and she was like, um, you can only have. I don't actually know what it was in, uh, in, in our weight system, but it was like the world's tiniest bag. And I was like, are you kidding? How am I supposed to put shoes and clothes in one tiny bag and get it on this little plane. But miraculously, I'm not you, sure how I did you it. You figured out. it out. I figured it out. <laughs> you're, but, you you're know, a crafty packing woman. Crafty. But you know, there there have been some amazing shows and some terrifying shows and it's been amazing. I mean, it's a journey. So what's the secret to such a successful long relationship? Well, I have to say, I think the most important thing in a long relationship is communication how to listen to each other and be respectful of that. Whether you're in the mood for accommodating somebody or not, you kind of have to give and take. It has to be equal. Truthfully, what, what I took away from, because I was married before, was that I, I was determined that I was going to be treated the way I treat other people and the way I felt I deserved, deserved to be treated. And I think everybody should, should do that. If you are in a relationship and your partner is not treating you the, in a way that makes you feel good about yourself and special, you are in the wrong relationship, lady. Get the fuck out. Absolutely. Yeah. It seems so obvious, but I feel like I see it all the time with my friends. I'm just like, hello. Why is that? If he wanted to, he would. Right? <sighs> what is that? I it's kind know. of, you know, sociological. It's a little bit of a girl thing, you know? I think it's more of a girl thing. I think there's more girls that would do that than guys that would do that. I saw a TikTok recently that was kind of interesting. I wonder if you agree. It was this guy saying when, okay, like this is like for like guy-girl relationships. The guy can be more in love with the girl and that's a successful relationship. And like, because the girl will always put in the effort, whether they're more in love or they're not, they're always going to put the effort into the relationship. The guy has to be more in love with the girl that's interesting. for like that to work. But if it's the other way where the guy doesn't and the girl's more Ooh, obsessed, that's, that's so isn't that interesting? And it God. made me think that women 
will all no matter what, whether we're head over heels in love or just like, eh, like this is kind of whatever, we're still putting in the effort. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? I guess that's, I don't know if it's just sociological or the maternal sort of thing. The one thing I will say that I do not do and I have never done, I dress for myself. I think this idea that women dress for men Absolutely. is kind of dated and stupid. I, think I agree. Girls, I feel like girls dress for other girls or themselves. Or themselves. Yeah. And girls are way more judgmental and way more important totally. in that way. Yeah. I, I do I do think that's like a 1950s Playboy thing, you know, that you're dressing for, for the men. male gaze. Yeah. 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 The male gaze, Devin. Okay. Buzzword. Okay. That was good. <laughs> Did you learn that on TikTok? Probably. <laughs> Probably. I learn most things on TikTok, yeah. let's be real. Yeah, everybody does. Yeah. Not me. <laughs> okay, well, we have a very exciting interview coming up. Yes, we do. We are going to be talking to Yasmin Laban, supermodel, wife of Simon Laban, mother, grandmother. Superhero. Superhero. Super amazing. Incredibly tall. Beautiful, killer style. I mean, she was Azadine Alaya's baby. He was obsessed with her. So and, cool. Oh my God, she's incredible. Which is funny that you guys have that connection. Isn't that? That you worked at Alaya back yeah. in the day. Meanwhile, she is working with him. Yeah. Like, wow. It was so great. At Alaya one time, it was such a bitchy Rodeo store. And the, the, the guy that owned it, who we will not mention his name, and she came in and she wanted all of this stuff. And she wanted a discount because she was Grace Jones. Mm. And they were like, no, I'm sorry. We don't give discounts. Alaya doesn't give discounts. She pushed him aside. She said, give me the phone, darling. She picked up the phone and she said, Papa, it's Grace. Yeah, here you go. Gave him the phone and she got that discount. Good for her. Oh, it was so good. Ask for what you want. She, yes, that's the message. You have to stand up for yourself. You have to ask for what you want. No one is going to give it to you. You have to ask for it. And in the nicest way. You don't have to be, you know, a sledgehammer about it. Right. But you do have to, you have to sort of know what you want. It might not be the end game, but you have to try different things. You have to ask for what you need and what you want in a relationship, in work, in everything. The worst they can say is no. Exactly. Right. Right. Well, with that, I guess we'll get to our interview with Yasmin Laban. Oh, my God. She is insane. I love her. She's one of my favorite people. We won't get enough from her in one. We'll have to go back for another Absolutely. one. Absolutely. We can have her back whenever she wants. Yeah. She's an incredible woman. Very accomplished. Very funny. Very gorgeous. Very glamorous. Very fluffy. We're Lots of nuggets her. of wisdom in there, yes. for sure. Yes, very definitely. So I am sitting here with the most Unbelievable, one of my favorite people in the entire world, the gorgeous oh. supermodel, oh, supermodel, Gila. super mom, super wife, I, super mother. I just want to live with you all like the time. Yazzie, and look how gorgeous she looks in her pink We could have the best jacket. relationship ever. We do. Why aren't, why aren't we just married to each other? Good question. We are. Excellent question. Mm. So Yaz, I think that the one thing I want to ask you first mm. is... How well, you were like the most amazing supermodel, I guess it was late 80s, early 90s. That's sweet. I did actually start in the mid 80s, um, <laughs> but we'll call it the 80s. Okay, shall let's we? say the 80s. Let's say the 80s, yeah. yeah. So, I had a good run. I had quite a good run. Tell everybody because people want to know how women got started doing their passion. So I would imagine modeling was a passion for you because you were kind you know, of insane. Fashion, design, everything to do with that kind of world, whether it was design of cars, um, you know, biro pens, stiletto heels. <laughs> I loved it all. You know, I was moved by it, I suppose. And I adored fashion. And I loved photography. My father taught photography. So I did. I mean, I, from the earliest age, at 13, my, my little Saturday job, I spent all my money buying magazines, buying Vogue every month. Mm. Okay, I may have bought cigarettes and alcohol as well. But um, <laughs> I mostly had my Saturday job so that I could buy very good perfume and buy Vogue. And I studied it. I studied it. I studied all the photographers, their lighting, all the fashion. So when I sort of didn't fall into modeling, I actually took myself to a modeling agency. I, I knew about all the photographers. Nobody had to teach me anything. Okay, hold on, stop. Tip. 
A lot of people say, how do I find my passion and how do I get started? That is passion and that is figuring out everything you need to know about what it is you want to do. That's a crazy inspiring story that you That's knew really all funny the photographers. I never really thought about it like that. I, 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 I was passionate about it. I did really, really love it. That's so funny. I should have figured that out already. I was. So actually, the reason I went to a modeling agency is because unlike everyone else after school, I hadn't, I didn't have a place in further education. I didn't have a job sorted out. I just sort of had some ideas of things. And I thought that was fine to be young and not really have a purpose in that way. I've, I felt like something was going to happen, but I didn't know what. But everyone made me so panicked. And everyone had kept saying, you know, you should be a model, you should be a model. So finally, I was so panicked by my own friends who were saying, you've got to do something, that I went to London and I went, thank God, I went to the best modelling agency there. And? Few. And, and of course, I started working straight away. You know, for some people, it, it took time. Literally within a week, I was working every day. Well, come on, have a look and, at you. And, of course, I did. Well, a bit like Linda. Linda was like that too. Lin Nobody had to tell Linda who the photographers were she was working Wait, with. Wait, let's just say Linda like. Evangelista. Okay. Is there any other Linda? Well, just saying. <laughs> Linda Evangelista. Yes. And how old were you? When I went to uh, Models 1, I was 18, about to turn 19. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I was baby. quite grown up, actually. You know, when you consider now, that, I mean, you know, and even then, there are a lot of, a lot of girls who started modelling much younger. I, I already kind of knew how I wanted to be treated in life and I knew how, you know, I was just that little bit more mature. Amazing. And other, like, little sidebar question, how does it feel to just tower over everybody being, you know, not the tallest person <laughs> on the planet? I just, I actually feel like I'm a really tall person. But you are a tall person. In my mind. No, but you, you really are. You, you read as tall. I've always thought of you as tall. Ooh, I like that so much. Yeah, yeah. So good. Oh, I mean, God. listen, I, I, I'm not even tall. That's why I keep buying those great big Gucci platforms, because I really like being really tall. I do you, like it. You're tall. You, Simon and John, are basically the same height. When I'm in my shoes, it's yes. It's amazing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> People so, keep forgetting the shoes. Yes. It, we also want to know, all of us, what is it like being married to Simon Le Bon? And when did you meet him? And where? And what were you wearing? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, it was a crazy story, really. You know, he, he, he saw my picture. Get this. This, sound, this sounds so bad. <laughs> it sounds he so saw, good. He saw my picture in a photographer's portfolio. He was working with this photographer. And he was getting really bored during the day, you know, and he started flipping through the photographer's portfolio and saw a picture of me and then started bugging the photographer. Like, who is she? Who is she? Who is she? What's her name? And the photographer was saying, no, no, Simon, that's really not done. You know, that's that's just not OK. Anyway, by the end of the day, he gave Simon a piece of paper with my name on and the agency. <gasps> wow. Oh, just the agency, just not the agency. your number. No, just the agency. So Simon didn't know what to do with this, to be to be fair. So he sort of had it in his pocket for a while, not really knowing. And then one of his aid, one of his managers was seeing, just started seeing Joanne Russell, who was, if you don't know Joanne Russell, she was a fabulous model, English girl, lived in New York. I mean, she was an absolute superstar. Anyway, he met Joanne and just happened to say, you don't happen to know this girl. And she went, oh my God, yeah, she's in the same agency as me. And this invitation came to go and see Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. It was like a royal premiere, and Simon decided this would be the perfect opportunity to invite me. So he called Models One and invited me to this premiere. And, it's and I was on <laughs> I was on location, as you were back then, shooting, you know, by the river in London. It was a Friday afternoon and I had to go to the phone box to get my details. And, you know, in those days I had to go with like a whole handful of like change, you know. Okay, wait, hold on, Yazzie. Mm. Phone booth. Phone booth. Didn't get in touch with her on Instagram. Had to actually contact the agency and get uh, uh, a oh, phone number. Oh, okay, go on. Well, well, he didn't get my phone number. He just got to ask the agency whether he could, you know, to invite me to this premiere. So I was getting my details from my agent. And it, I then started having an argument with my agent because she kept saying, do you want to go to the premiere of this movie with Simon Le Bon? Did you I, know who he was? And I just went, 
what the hell are you, I, I, are you, what the hell are you, I just want my details. In the end, I got so cross with her because it was a Friday afternoon and they used to crack open the wine by about five o'clock. And I just went, you know, I, mean, I can't believe it. I don't mind you being drunk. I don't care if you're drinking. It's Friday <laughs> afternoon. I just want my goddamn details. Stop going on about this guy. I've never met him. Who the hell does he think he is? Absolutely no way. And in the end, she, she turned around and she went, oh, but do you want to, do you want to talk to Joanne Russell? And I went, oh, Joanne Russell? Yeah, uh, totally. Um, yeah, Joanne can call me. So she did. That's amazing. And it's thanks to Joanne Russell that you met Simon. That I met Simon Le because bon. you know she said honestly he's really not creepy. He's <laughs> actually really a nice guy. Because That's amazing. I, I just thought that was such an affront. But you didn't know. You didn't know who he was. You didn't know. I knew who he was. You did. But how very dare he ask me? Mm. We'd never met. Well, well, anyway. Okay, so that's history. Thirty-eight years later. Thirty-eight yeah. years. Okay, yeah. if I had, it's obviously if I had a drink me. right now, I would drink to that. Thirty-eight years. That's mega. That's an amazing accomplishment. And you have three gorgeous children. I mean, I only have two gray cells left. You know what I mean? The, the brain is fried now. But it's a long. That's a long, beautiful, He's amazing. He's taken the best of me, Gila. No, you guys are insane together. Okay, so let's now talk a little bit about. You've had this insane career. Insane. I've been lucky. Oh no, you're gorgeous, and you've had this amazing career, and you're responsible for it. You've got to take ownership of what we've created and what we've done. I always like to say, right time, right place. Well, right that's true. Place, you know, that's true too. Yeah. So I did work hard. You did. Okay. Okay, let's own that. And then, so what is it like being, you know, like what I like to say, hashtag live in the wife life, we're with the band. What is it like going on the road? We've got this whole like road paraphernalia. This is actually a Duran 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 fan. Mm. I have a great time. The world changed for us when you came into (laughs) the show, darling, because you brought this light this light mm. and this energy and this fun. And we've, I don't know, we felt more like a gang. We are a gang. So it's, you know, thank you, because touring never used to be as good. I can tell you that right now. Pe- people think touring is just like, just so fun and glamorous. And oh, we and like you know, glamour you, and, We but? love glamour, but it's not glamorous at all. I mean, come on, no. you know what it's like backstage. It's not exactly glamorous. We keep no. trying to find the glamour. It's not really there, yeah. it's in our hearts. We have to bring <laughs> the glamour. It's in our hearts and it's in our jewelry. Right. Yeah, exactly. But you know, I mean, it's lots of packing and unpacking and you start, you start focusing on the really, really silly, tiny things that you shouldn't be focusing How on. How many suitcases do you take on tour? Two now. Two. Two? It, wait, and everything goes, jewelry, shoes, like everything is in two suitcases. Two. One big, wow. one small. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Is that good or is that bad? That's insane. And that's really, really good. Is that good? Yeah. Oh. Okay, what's your favorite I pre- thought I was going to get told off then. Oh, like, no. Oh, my God, you diva. How very dare you take two cases. Oh, no, that's mm. really good. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite pre-show drink? Ah, oh, well, you know, I keep trying to move away from the white wine, but it, it suits me quite well, I feel. Yeah. Mm. We yeah. get on, we're, we're good partners. Yeah. Yeah. So white wine, and then during the show, we're, uh, where's your favorite place well, to watch you, the show? You, you have to be on the sound desk, the sound and lighting desk. It's the place to be. And, you know, I don't need a seat. I don't need to be side stage, although I like wandering around. I mean, I love being in the crowd. So I like going right to left. Sometimes you'll find me wandering around, really annoying the hell out of security because I'm the person loitering in the aisleways. But, you know, I love being on the sound and lighting desk. Yes, mm. It's the best. Plus, they have a really cute sound guy now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's really good, though. He's, he's, he's very, so, very talented, so darling. Good. He's very talented. Now, yes. are you allowed to give notes? Well, we have a little debrief after the show. Yes. Debrief. Um, a debrief. Yeah. Notes on just how the show was going, how yes. Simon sounded, what yes. he was wearing. Do you know, the thing is, I can be useful in ways that maybe somebody else can't. I mean, I come from a musical family too. My daughters are all singers. You know, they all sing beautifully. So I can help Simon with lots of things. You know, there are little tiny bits of things. He knows all about everything, but he just needs somebody to remind him. You know, it's somebody, amazing. Somebody to stand there and tell him how to, how his posture's affecting his voice. 
you know, how to use his neck, how to... It's just little things, little tips, because, you know, you just want everybody to have the best night. I want him to have the best time doing it, you know, enjoying it, and for it to all work beautifully. So mm. we've got Wife to be, of a rock star right here. We've got to right be here. a team, right? Yeah, we've that's insane. Team. That's really... Otherwise, what on earth am I doing on, on the road? What the hell are you what doing? What the hell the... am I what doing What are we doing anyway? on the road? Okay. Oh, my what God. Is I knew it? this is going to start turning into a therapy okay. session, but it, it's in a good way. Okay, so... Here you are. You're this insane, you know, woman that's had a brilliant insane. career, insane. your own career. <laughs> insane. We're all a little crazy. But now you're sort of spending a lot of time on the road. I What's am. that like to sort of have like a shift from... It's, you know what? It's really difficult. I could not have done this at a younger age. Um, and, it's, and it is very, very difficult to sublimate yourself to somebody else. So it's all about him, all about the show. It's all about making the show great, and I don't have an official job on the road. So you can very, very easily, your self-esteem starts to really, really get squished until... Now, this happened to me last year, and I knew it was going to happen. There came a point where one morning I had to hide under the covers and <laughs> cry nonstop, <laughs> really blubber for about two hours because... You know, who am I? I'm nothing. I'm useless. I'm the, the, you know, really awful. Thank God it was Vegas. I couldn't throw myself out of the window because you can't open the windows in a Vegas hotel. And and I, and then I thought, pull yourself together. You knew this was going to happen. You knew you were going to hit this low. Because it does happen. You, you start to feel like you're nothing. It's very easy mm. to live in someone's shadow and, and not really think of it like that. But it eats away at you. And it's something... You know, it's ingrained in us. You know, as women of a certain generation, I think we give ourselves almost too readily. You know, I always joke about it with Simon. You know, I'm like, I'm I'm the person, you know, I'm the chivalrous one that will throw myself over a puddle for him. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and it keeps happening and keeps happening. So it's hard being on the road. And for him, it's hard because, you know, everything is about him. I mean, when he gets home. There's a complete turnaround. <laughs> Last time we came home, I went, okay, honey, I've heard about as much as I need to hear from you. From now on, it's zoop. I don't want to hear anything about you. Nothing. It's all about me now. You know, and he's good. You know, I just make him empty the trash and, you know, load the dishwasher. Let's get real now. Wow, that's really real. Yeah, let's get real. Now, what about on the road hobbies do you knit do you listen to audiobooks do you oh, read Gila, you know how funny this was I read voraciously on the road because I feel like if I don't do that what the hell am I doing I'd be hitting my head against you know the, the door but I tried I thought I've got to have a hobby I've got to learn something new and I was obsessed with crocheting I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna do this and I went online and I, jo I joined the crochet creative crochet corner and I'm still a member, still a paid up member. Can I crochet? No. <laughs> I'm still going just the same way. And it's ended up being this long snake because I can't turn around. Oh it's not easy. God, it's this... just, it's, I mean, look. No, but I, I started knitting this during the pandemic and I didn't have enough yarn. So I just kept taking it out and starting again. But look, that's It was fabulous. going to be a scarf. It's as far as I got. It's fabulous. Well, not really, but it why was fun. Can't, why can't I well, knitting do is, this? You know, Knitting's harder than crocheting Is it? as well. Well, yeah, you've got to count and shit like that, you know. So it's difficult being oh on my the goodness. road and I've being... Had, oh, it's, it's hard. Having Keeping a hobby going. I mean, the only thing I, that is great is, thankfully, we're very lucky. We stay in hotels that have gyms. Oh, thank the Lord. Because at least I get to go to the gym. Okay, so I have to ask you another question. So somebody wrote in a question that I thought was really moving. It sort of really got to me, and I want to hear your take, your, your, your response to her. She's a mother that's raised, I think, three or four kids, and now she's only got one child at home who's 13. So she fe And she's sort of said she's done administrative work, and you know, I'm not really sure. Nothing really that sounded like a career. So now she's got time on her hands she can mm. pick and choose she said she's depressed all the time all the time absolutely really well you're like a rabbit in the headlights you don't know for so long you haven't asked the question what do you want because it's always been about everyone else so when somebody finally says well what do you want i remember people asking me this all the time i'll be i just look at them gormless like you know literally a rabbit in the headlights 
got no idea. I've got no idea. Never really asked that question of myself. Wow. So it's really hard. I can res I, I, that, that resonates so with do me. Do you have any kind of advice for her? I think you've just got to start somewhere, haven't you? And I, I'm the most hopeless, fearful person on the planet. But it's something I've learned from my youngest daughter. One of her best friends has been living with me for about the past five years. Tremendous young girl, Ilaria has done so many things in her life already. She's, she inspires me because she just does. She doesn't think about it. She has got a game plan. She has got uh, plenty of plans. But unless you start doing something, how do you know what you don't like and what you do like and where you're going to go? And you never know what conversations or who you're going to meet along the way. Like you start something, you start a job, could be anything. Just get you out of the house, start doing something, have a great conversation with someone you could be going in another direction. Okay. That yeah. is your answer from Yasmin Laban, supermodel. Who wishes, who wishes she could take her own wise. advice. <laughs> okay, the last thing I think that we I need really to... need to listen to myself. You do. <laughs> the last thing we need to talk about here. Come on, we got to talk about fashion. <gasps> Yazzie is yes. like a serious vintage girl. She wears a lot of vintage... Gorgeous pink vintage jacket found in Dolly, Dolly Python. Python. Now, you see, that's a good thing about going on the road in America. I get to go to the vintage. So it's the first thing I check. Is vintage. Is, well, <laughs> what kind of vintage is there? Is it good? What are the recommend recommendations? Do we have a day off? And yeah, that's where you Dallas, go. that was it. We had to go to Dolly, Dolly Python. I, and I bought this outfit. It's incredible. And it's so gorgeous. And I love skirt, everything about the jacket. it. jacket. Yeah. Heels or flats? Barbie wants to know. Can I have both, please? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> you could have anything you want. I want it all. Yazzie, mm. who's your favorite designer? Well, I mean, it totally depends on the era, but I wouldn't be here right now without Azadine Alaya. Oh, my God. He, Love. He was my God. Love. And I lived. It was my uniform. I and mean, I didn't have to think about anything, it, you know, traveling so much. I, I would just put a little Azadine dress on, that was it. Done. Do you know that I worked at Alaya on Rodeo oh. Drive? Oh, that's a great education, <laughs> right there. And Grace Jones was one of my favorite customers. Bonkers, but brilliant. Totally bonkers. Yeah. And she wore Alaya better. I mean, I've got one of the same dresses that Grace has. Grace wears it a lot better. Amazing. You wear it pretty well, She's too. She's figured out how to do the hood. I still haven't figured out how to do the, the hood. hood. I've only had it about 38 years. Yeah, I think we. Could, I think I could help you style that. I, I think you may have. To I help think me with I it. could help you style that. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about. Oh, what's your favorite Duran song? Gosh, that's like that's like asking. Come on, you whether gotta I've pick got one. a favorite child. I, know, I just mean, gotta pick one. Horrendous. I always loved Serious. They only ever played it. Um, Wait, a what? Few times Serious. Uh, and Serious. Then I loved. Wait, have my I ever heard that? My Antarctica. Always loved that. And off the last album, I love Give It All Up. But Falling is a masterpiece. Falling. What about Come On Done? I think that was written about My birthday present? You. Mm, yes. I mean, <laughs> can you imagine someone writing a song called Come On Done about you? Do you know that I have to tell you the story. It was so I gorgeous. I want that. I was working in New York doing the, doing the shows. And in those days, New York used to end the show season. So I'd had a tough... Tough old time, I was missing home desperately, really exhausted, really tired, really had enough of fashion, on the verge of tears all the time. And I was staying with my best friend, Gail Elliot, and her husband, then husband John. And Simon said, I've, I've got a present for you. I've got, I've, I've got, I've done this song. And he sent a demo to me, to New York. And John and I put it on, my friend's husband, and we sat there. And the tears came streaming down. I mean, I was a bit emotional and homesick anyway, so it didn't help. But streaming down, what a, what a present. For I mean, it's not really for me. Do you know what I is. mean? It's just got one line in it for me. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just insane, Because yeah. he doesn't song. write like that, Simon. He doesn't write in that very linear way. Beautiful. So, so he has, there are lots of inspirations in there. Ooh, okay. What was your favourite... Duran Duran show and what was the worst Duran Duran show? Well, I wouldn't say worst. I mean, that's rather negative. And we don't like to be negative, do no, we? No, we don't. I mean, but... you know, there was a bad one. There was a bad one where we may have had voice issues and someone may have, may have not been very well and it shouldn't have happened. We won't go there. Um, oh, do you know, 
I mean, we've had so, we had every night's a great night. Yeah. But do you remember that night in Paris when he was on stage with Mark Ronson, and Mark Ronson's band? Do you remember the little yes. the little Seagal yes. theater? Yes. That was fun that night. Yes, I yeah. do remember that. That was a good yeah. night. Yeah. Yeah, that was. I mean, you know, the thing is, there's a lot I can't remember, Gila. You know, I mean, I put it down to the wine and the age, and you know. My God. There's a lot that I get. Same. A, yeah, Same. I get a lot of. Places, people, shows mixed up, which is quite nice actually. Because if I get the mixture right, I end up with like really good memories. It's all good, it's really, all good. in the end. <laughs> Yazzie, could we just get into it a little bit more about Uh-oh. you're under the covers, you're crying, you're freaking out. It's like what's yeah. happened to Yasmin yeah. no, Lebon, supermodel? Bed, bed to swallow me up. Yeah, yeah. How did you get yourself out of that? I, you know, it's really hard. It, it's it's difficult. We. We all go through it. it. Everybody's life may look glossy and rosy from the outside and the grass is always greener, but we're all going through ups and downs. And, you know, sometimes the ups are great and the downs are really low. I don't, you know, you just have to, you just have to realise that there's nothing anyone else can do for you. It's all about you. It's all in your head and it, it's, you know... It's, we get so wrapped up in ourselves and everything around us is making us even more and more obsessed about ourselves all the time. I, you, you just got to, I don't know how you do it, but you know, you have to just dig deep and carry on. Dig deep, stay yeah. calm and yeah. carry on. I'm very, I'm, I'm very stoic like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm a real believer in just moving on, just moving through. It's like moving through pain. You know, it's not, if it doesn't kill you, you can just you can quieten it down you know I can I can do that that's good and I just think you know we you, it's very easy to just be totally enveloped in that kind of self-pity and the minute mm. that starts happening you you have to watch it and you will survive you will get over it but the next time you hit that low you'll start recognizing little signs like I've been here before I've been here before I got through this. This isn't as bad. And it gets easier every time, which is why I kind of relayed that story. Is that in the past, I would have been roaming around for 24 hours, crying my eyes out, you know, sitting in parking lots and things like that. You know, I used to go to the, I used to go to the petrol station. Like a lot of other women, in the middle of the night when you go storming out of the house, where are you going to go? You get in the car, where are you going to go? Well, you've got nowhere to go, have you? You go to the petrol station. Oh, God, I've never done and, that in And my I life. see, no, I, I went there, and many, Wait, many a night, I'd sit there in the car. Other women are sitting there in the car. None, the, none of us are buying petrol. At the gas station? None of us this are buying petrol. This could be an English thing. No? I don't know and if then, we do that And then here. what do you do? Then you just go home, don't you? I don't, I've never yeah. done that before. Yeah. I'd be terrified. Yeah. No, there's me and a lot of women, I can tell you. At the... That, pet- was, that was an eye-opener. I wow. thought I was the only... That's when I thought I was the only one going through this, and I went to that petrol station that night, not buying petrol, and there was literally two other women in the car. I mean, this is like a video for a band. Like, they're at this gas station in England, all these, like, women that are crying. I mean, no one's got anywhere to go, and you know you're going to go back home, Mm. and then you're going to have to get out of that car, and you're going to have to face it. But you know what? You can carry on. You can carry on. You can do this. You can. Wow, that is crazy story. Which brings me to <laughs> this <laughs> video, this Duran video called Girl Panic. Ah, yes. Mm, Girl there was Panic. a little thing. Nick and I started concocting this idea, like how great it would Insane. be. Insane. Brilliant. Sick, yeah. crazy, brilliant video. Except I was meant to play the manager. I was meant to have like the character role, which everybody thought would be so hysterical, you know, rock wife manager. <laughs> And but I you, thought it was great, but, but then you, I had to step in as the guitarist. As the guitar player. I looked more like Animal from The Muppets. You know, the hair was all over my... <laughs> because I didn't really want to do it. It was so yeah, good. Yeah, I was so pissed off that they asked me at that age. I'm like, why would you not let me do a video in my prime for crying out loud? <laughs> now I have to do this video with all my hair over my oh, face. Oh, no, you looked insane. Uh, okay, just hold on. We're talking about Naomi Campbell, Ava Herzegovia... Yasmin Laban, Cindy Crawford, Helena, Helena Christensen. <laughs> uh, Ava really, oh really God. took the biscuit she as was... Nick. You know, because she's tall, she's so tall, and and her limbs just fly around everywhere, and quite gawky, and with all her fluffy blonde hair, and she was absolutely Brilliant. hysterical. Every time I looked at her, I, I was just cracking up. Do you think everybody's getting this? Do you get that they're all playing Duran? They were all right? playing Naomi. 
point blank had told me many years ago that she wanted to be Simon. <laughs> so I knew that we couldn't get this, this couldn't be, this casting had to go the right way. Isn't so I had to tell Naomi straight away, you're, you're playing Simon. Simon Of Vaughan. course, you're playing Simon. <laughs> I, and 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 all the guys were like Nick Rhodes as the bellman. As the bellman, mm, yeah, that was kind of brilliant. Which is a, a wonderful reversal of things. <laughs> yes, that was amazing. Jonas Ackerland oh, directed it. Was it was amazing. We, I mean, we had the run of the Savoy. It was for insane. like two and a half days. It was completely mad. There were these gorgeous women, and they were styled, you know. St- Completely styled. It was beautifully, gorgeous. Beautifully, yeah. beautifully. And, and just everyone running around this hotel. And the hotel were amazing. They were so good. They're like, oh, yeah, you can use that room. Oh, yeah, you can. They just didn't care. They loved it. So when you finished shooting this video, Girl Panic, and you're playing the guitar player, did you want to start your own band? <laughs> now we're getting really deep now. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I kind of feel sometimes when I hang out with you backstage yeah. that... I'd kind of rather we just could, start a band with we you, could be yeah. A, we like, could absolutely be a band. The Dead absolutely. Mics. Absolutely. The Dead always, Mics. The Dead Mics. The that dead would mics. be us. That's yeah. fantastic. That could be good. It's genius. You're really good with names. <laughs> it's quite good with branding, this one. So that could be fun. So have you never wanted to start your own band? Like, move over, Simon. I mean, it's so hard. How many musicians can you have in the family? That's true. He, he, he takes up a lot of that musical space. He does. It's a little bit unfair. Um, and actually, you know, in another life, I I could quite easily have been a musician, gone into music, music production, completely. I, I'm I'm fascinated about your journey. You know how you manage to find all that find that confidence within yourself. To you were bringing bringing up two children virtually on your own. And and started a company. Which how do you even do that? Like, do you have a manual? Like, do you know what to do? I mean, or, uh, you know, I wouldn't know where to begin. I, I literally it gives me, and I'm starting sweating at the thought, <laughs> at the I'm thought of it. it. Of where do you start? How how did you have that wherewithal? That's such a good question, and I have no idea except that I just didn't have another choice. Confidence is something that people ask me about all the time. You know, mm-hmm. how are you so self-confident? I think part of it is because I was a middle child. So, and I was a very small child. And I was always just in the middle of these two sisters that were just like on top of me trying to beat me up. And I just, you know, pushed them out of the way. I think also because I moved every one to three years, mm-hmm. which was so good. Mm-hmm. Like, you got to be the new kid in school. Mm-hmm. A lot of people Get don't like that. Yourself, don't oh, my you? God. Yeah. I had new style every school yeah. I went to. Yeah. And I am not sure why it never bothered me if I was, you know, had a lot of friends or I never really had boyfriends. I was way too tiny for that. And I, I wasn't really interested in that. I was more interested in, I don't know, I lived in my head in a fantasy world. Yeah. And I just uh, liked, like uh, you know, I just... I don't know. Very optimistic person. I've always been very optimistic. And I think I think I think you nailed it with the need. Need is the yes. greatest driver in yes. life. Let's yes. be honest. Yes. And I think we were like that. I mean, I, I couldn't wait to leave my hometown. I mean, I literally. I think my parents knew from the age of five that I was going to get out of Dodge. You know, it was just written all, all across my forehead that I actually just couldn't be the person I really knew that was inside. In my hometown, with people Which is, who had known me growing up. What's your I hometown? Needed, Tell needed everybody, what's your hometown? Oxford. Oxford, come on. Like, it this is like so Oxford, posh, but England. It's not. Well, but, but yeah, I, it's had posh. To, I had to get out of there uh, to be me. So I understand that kind of, uh, that, that, that that's such a good thing, actually moving and reinventing yourself. You know, my father always told me that travel, you, to travel is the best education it's, in the world. Traveling is great. It yeah. definitely is. It but is. I, I also think that it can. It didn't work for my older sister at all. It was horrible for her. For me, it was amazing. I think a lot of army brats are like that, where there, there's a lot of creative people that, you know, were army brats because they were always moving around. Mm. I don't know. It just worked for me. Um, I don't know why. I, I know that one of the things that's always worked for me, I'm not a depressed person. I never have been. If things get me, to, like when I got divorced, that was like, 
you know, that was big. Um, and I went, I remember going to work and there's this big, nasty, ugly, like the best ugly blue vinyl, St. Vincent de Paul chair. And I remember going to work, work is a panacea for drama. Yeah. If I think if yeah. you're going through anything, yeah. get your work. ass to work, work. and just work. And I sat in that chair. I felt like I was like in a tunnel. I remember going to Pam's house. So I was like, I'm getting divorced. And, you know, seeing the empty closet is a bit of a shock. Although, I mean, bye. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that it was like, filled. yeah, it, it, it just, it just got me work has gotten yeah. me through a lot of, I love to work. I'm a bit of a workaholic. You yeah, you do. So that's, that, that, that's a good thing for me working. And I think that. I think it's a good thing for everybody. I think human beings we're not meant to have time on our hands. You know, that's that's a real problem. That's when you start navel gazing, thinking about yourself too much, internalizing everything. We're just not meant to be doing We're meant to be out there surviving and worried about the bloody saber-toothed tiger behind us and how we're going to get food on the table. <laughs> the saber-toothed tiger. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like we're not really meant to be yeah. sitting there considering our meaning in the universe. Not really. That's I not a, a happy place for most people. You could you could do a bit of it, but it it can take in you down end, some yes, nasty little purpose. Holes. You have to have a purpose. You have have a, but give yourself. I mean, you know the thing I really, really, really want to. I really I want to be a farmer or something. You know, I, I love physical work, so I absolutely love it when you know there's some nasty bit of the garden I have to tidy up, and it takes me all day, and I get really, really dirty and sweaty, and I love you it. Love that. I love it because mm. I can see what I've done at the end of it, and then I go in and I have the fantastic like three showers and. And then I feel really tired and I feel... And you feel good. Great. And it's going back to nature. And I think, oh my goodness, I should just, I should be a farmer. You know, but the back's just gone now and the knee's gone as well. And now I've got, you know, plantar fasciitis and I can't do... You know, I've got all the old modelling war wounds now. <laughs> my God. <laughs> you know. So you can't do... I tried to some, one time... Don't get something for nothing in life. Pay I, the price. I, once I wanted, I decided that I was going to learn how to cook... I actually can cook you can literally cook. almost nothing. I have no patience for cooking. It's like, oh, you, if John is on the so road. Funny. You got away with it the other no, day. I know, but if John is on the road and it's like, I'm hungry and I go down to the kitchen and I'm like, oh, I'm going to make something and I open the refrigerator and then I look at my phone. <laughs> Then I get on Instagram and then I'm like, okay, bye, bye. kitchen. But it's never, I am i don't like touching food really. I mean, I'm not obsessed with food, truthfully, but I thought I would want to do that, but it just never. It's not your thing, darling. No. It's not your thing. But you thing. have to try. And you can't do everything. Saying that though, bitch got away with it yesterday. Kind of. There's me going, oh no, you'll want to rest that meat. Oh no, you're, ooh, it's, you're putting it in the grill. The grill's not even warmed up yet. And I'm thinking, whoa, she's going to ruin the John's going to go <laughs> nuts. It's his dinner. And blow me, she turns out something absolutely fantastic. I'm like, well, this, is, this isn't fair. This once isn't I, fair. Yazzie, once I had a dinner party, this is right after Travis was born, uh, for it, my my ex-husband's friends and I was obsessed with Cajun cooking. I love spicy food. So I got this Paul Prudhomme cookbook and I, I like cooked all the stuff in there and I look around the table of all his friends. Everybody's like bright red, <laughs> dripping with sweat. And it was like, okay, we'll never do this again. No, it was like, we're done with cooking. I mean, that does, it's like a nightmare scenario for me too. I, I'm really, I, I'm, so I'm still it. very self-conscious about my cooking. I, like I mean, accessories. I'll cook for young people. I'll just throw food at them. I don't call it cooking. I call it feeding. Just it's like, a different thing. I'm not a feeder either, but I like. Ex I love setting a table. I love tablescapes. <gasps> I like everything oh, to do with that. Yeah. Not oh, the actual yeah. food part. Your yeah. your your table settings are beautiful. Oh, I love doing that. I could do that all day. There you go. I want to do another red carpet with you. We did a Met red carpet and that was kind of brilliant. We did it backstage oh, at the O2, which was epic. That was fun. It felt quite naughty. It was. I, I felt a bit naughty doing it. It was. Because it it's, like, it's not really a me thing to do, but I got into it. It was so bit. funny. It was the Karl Lagerfeld Met and it was just- <gasps> It's hysterical. It was good. So I definitely want to do another red carpet with you. Okay. And then we kind of probably should do something, you know, really English, because I am an Anglophile after all. So we'll have to like do like a little Ooh. English moment. Like on we'll the to, road. On the road. On the road in England. On, oh. 
Scotland. Scotland. Oh my God. <laughs> How do we not talk about Scotland? Scotland oh road God. trip. Okay. Come on. Tartan McQueen. Oh my, oh my God. God. I gotta okay. get my leather kilt. All right. Yep, yep, okay. Yep, right. Yep, your yep. leather. Okay. Yep, mm. yep, yep. All right. So that's, that's next. That's next. That's definitely next. Girls we'll the take road. the flying Scotsman up there. <gasps> Oh, absolutely. Okay. I'll get the car transported. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, wait, you've got to have a classic car. Wait, there's there. one thing that you don't know about Yasmin Laban, YLB. She is, she'll be sitting, you know, in between whatever on the road with like classic car magazines. Yeah. I am not kidding. I, I can't be without, I can't be without like classic a car, car magazine. Like car magazine. They've got to be near me. I start to get, I start to feel nervous if I don't have one next to me. Yeah, like yeah. that yeah. doesn't do it for me. Yeah. I, I can look I've at a lot of magazines, them. but classic yeah. cars. So, yeah. and you just bought an insane classic car. Well, no, we just, uh, it's a really cute, it's a, a Jaguar. It's an XK 120, I should say. Not the 150, <laughs> no, the 120. <laughs> Infinitely superior car. Uh, and it's gorgeous. And you judge roadster. car shows. I've done I've done quite a lot of classic car judging. Yes, yes, a wonderful, wonderful gig. I mean, listen, to be able to to spend a weekend just discussing cars—that's my idea of heaven. God. So most people I start talking cars to, their eyes start to glaze over and they just start to edge away from me. That's you. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, when you go and do that, it's just all about the cars, and we all just talk cars. It's fabulous. It's like it's my si idea of heaven. You, Simon, and John will pour over these car yeah. magazines like for hours, yeah. and I'm like, okay, I mean, Simon like... never used to be like this. Really? Yeah, yeah. I did tell him early doors that if this relationship's going to work, <laughs> you're going to have to either learn to watch Formula One racing with me, or learn to shut up. While I watch, while I watch it, you know, it's one or the other. Formula but. One racing. I mean, the first time I drove with yeah. Yanzi and Simon in my car, and I was driving. Literally, I was terrified. I was sweating. I'm the worst driver you've ever driven with, and I, I drive very slow. very slow. And I also have this habit of like leaning into the steering wheel. Like my son's always like <laughs> pushing me back, and I'm like, Ooh. yeah. In fairness, it was a big car. Well, you know, and you, you're petite. Also, and driving in England. Formed. I've done that a couple times. Like I'm on the sidewalk, like the wrong side of the road, even though they call it the, the right, right side, side of the road. It's like yeah. I am I never driving. I can remember driving. driving with the, the kids. We had family holiday on a dual carriageway. I mean, dual carriageway. What the and fuck is that? And that's two lanes. What two, the fuck two is lanes that? all going the same way. And suddenly there was a car, roundabout car, car coming towards me, and we're like, uh, I'm like, what on earth? And apparently they do it all the time out in the countryside because they just couldn't be bothered to go the other way that was a bit longer. So they just yeah. decide to go the wrong way on a jogger. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. It's a special place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So say no more. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yazzie, thank you so much for coming. This was amazing. Is this the end? I have like a special oh. gift for you. Would you like no. one oh of my these goodness. like Look special Duran mags? They're like babies. To take with you. <laughs> I just are. want to pinch his cheek. I mean, babies. all of these. Yeah, like little babies. Look at Simon in that one. I mean, come on. Anyway, you're amazing. Listen, they've they've kept the whole hair dyeing industry in, in business. <laughs> a lot of companies would have gone down had it not been for Duran Duran. I love you. I we love have you to do too. a show backstage. Another one at a good venue. Fuck them. We're doing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. I hold See you, you to in it. San Diego. See you in San Diego. On Bye, the road. gorgeous. Love you. Live in the wife life. Love you. Love you too. Well, thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Fluffy Files. We have so much fun. You can follow Gila at, at Fluffy Raxel on TikTok and on Instagram. You can follow me also at Devin Drain. You can also email us now at fluffyfilespod at gmail.com and ask Gila questions. And make sure. They're actually really good questions because I am up for answering these things. We've had some really good, really good email ones. in. I was really, really happy. So yeah. thank you so much if you sent an email in. We really love it. We're going to answer them in the next episode. And honestly, they were really, really good. I love meeting everybody at the shows. You guys are amazing. Duran does have incredible fans. And the, the induction to the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was amazing. And that's down to the fans, really. And so we love you. Thanks. And we love Devin. Thanks, guys. And we love Yazzie. Woo! We'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.